Hello everyone, this is Alejandro and in this tutorial we will see how we can use the drag and drop features on Spline to create experiences in which you can drag an object and drop it on another place. We will see how to use the limits to constrain the movement of the dragging and we will see how we can use the drag and drop in combination with physics to create interactive experiences in which you drop an object and it falls by gravity. Alright, let's begin. Alright, so to get it started, I would like to use one of the templates from the spline library and I just want to choose this one here because it has different examples. Alright, so on this scene we have three cubes and each cube contains a drag and drop behavior, you can see here. And uh, if I go to the play mode, you will see how it works. So I'm going to drag, click and drag this object and you will see that it's now snapping on the surface of this sphere when I drag in, we just put it back. Same with this one, and same with this one. You will also notice that when I, the snapping happened, there is a little sound, so that is a drag and drop behavior, and I will show you how it works. All right, so let me just remove the drag and drop event from the first object here, and let me just repeat it, right? So I'm just going to create a new event, then I'm going to uh, select the drag and drop event. Let's go to the play mode just to show you how it works by default. Now uh, you'll see here that when I move the cube, the cube is not snapping to any of the other objects because by default the drop behavior is disabled. You will also notice that the physics are working but on a new scene physics will not be enabled so make sure that if you want physics to work you need to enable them on the simulation tab here on your right side panel. If I disable physics for example and then I try to move this object, the object is never going to fall because there is no gravity. Alright, so let me just enable physics again. Alright, so I'm going to enable now the drop behavior. You can see it here at the bottom and the drop behavior has a couple of settings that we can check. So by default, it's going to snap to the object position. So the object position is where the pivot is. So you can see this pivot here is the object position. So if I try to drag this object now, it's going to snap to the position of this object. Now, because the sphere is bigger than the cube, it's hard to see where the cube is. But if I make the sphere smaller, like this, and then I drop the cube, you will see that it's snapping to the position of the sphere, right? But that's not really what we want, right? What we really want is that we want to snap to the surface of these objects. So there's another option here that is called surface, and then we go to the play mode, and now when we snap, it's just going to snap to the surface of the sphere. In this case, the surface of the floor or the surface of this object and so on. Now, the reason why the other cubes are being pushed is because those cubes, they have a dynamic collision because of the physics. So the snapping is not gonna work because it's just colliding with the, the cube, right? All right, so there is a couple of other uh, options that you can play around here, like the snapping speed or the auto orientation. By default, the auto orientation is enabled, but if I disable the auto orientation, what it means is that it's just going to maintain the original rotation. You can see here it's snapping to the surface of the sphere, but the orientation of the cube is no longer changing. So it's always just standing up. Perhaps you want the same behavior of this cube to be on all of the other cubes, so you don't need to create an event for each cube, you can just do it from this single cube by adding the other ones. So let me just remove these events from these other cubes, and now the first cube is going to be the one adding the behavior on the other cubes. Right now I have cube 4, I want cube 2, and then I want cube 3. So now all of the cubes will have the same behavior, and if I go to a play mode, you will see that this is working, it is also working and this is also working so you can simplify your work by just doing everything from the same place now if you want individual behaviors in that case you do want to have a custom drop and drop behavior on each object that you want it to be different Another thing that you can do is to add actions to behaviors of the drag and drop. So if you go here to the bottom, you will see that we have drag and drop behaviors. And what I would like to is that when I drop an object, I would like to create a transition and it's going to transition between these two states. Let me just go here and make sure that that's what is working. Maybe this is going to be just maybe 0.3 seconds. And now I go to the play mode and you can see that it's transitioning immediately. 
Now, the thing is that because it's also dropping to the floor, the transition is happening every time that it's just snapping to the floor. So what I do want is to specifically make sure that the drop behavior only works on a list of objects. In this case, I would like it to work only with the sphere. So if I go to play mode now, you will see that it's only going to snap with the sphere and it's going to change the color only on that case. You can also trigger a sound. So for example, instead of the transitions, I can trigger a sound and then you can pick any sound from the library of a spline or you can upload your own sound. So right now, maybe I can choose one of these, like this one, pot two. And now if I go to a play mode, you can see it's just already working. Another thing that you can do is to control the movement of your dragging by adding limits to the movement. So if you select, for example, this object here and you go to the settings, you will see that there is drag limits. And then here I am controlling the Y minimum and the max value here. So if I go to a play mode, you'll see that I can drag this object, but there is a limit, right? And they will not move more than that. And in this case, there is two limits. It's one for each axis. So you can see here for X and for C, I will control the limits. Now, the units in here are the same type of units that you see on your position. So if you have an object in a particular position, you can try and match the limits to control the movement. So if I move this object, you will see that the object is going to be between the limits. This object is also using a little bit of damping, which is why when you move it, um, it sort of creates this little bouncing effect. This object is actually not using physics, but the behavior with the damping makes it look like it's actually um, colliding in terms of physics, but it's just moving between the constraints of the drag and drop. So for example, in this case, the limit will be starting from this point to this point, and then from this point to this point. So this will be either the maximum or the minimum. So when you set your values in here, that's what is going to move, right? So it's going to move 200 units in that direction and 200 units in the other direction or by verse. So in this example, you can move the object and you can push around all of the other objects like if we were on the space. And the way this works is that we have physics enabled, but there is no gravity. So all of the objects are just there and you can move them by inertia. In fact, you can also just push your own object and it will just flow like if we were on the space. In this other example, you can see how you can combine the surface snapping, the sound to create something like this. One peculiar aspect of this experience is that the transition that is happening is not happening in the cube but on the sphere and also the cube contains a light source that is creating this little glowing effect so it looks really nice and so it feels like a magnetic effect in a way so let me just show you so the cube has a point light inside and the point light has shadows disabled which is why you only see the light in here and the cube itself is the one that contains the uh, drag and drop the cube also has a mouse down so when i click on the cube it gets bigger you can see a little animation there and it also has a sound when i click on it right you can see here there's a transition and there is the sound Here's another example of combining physics with objects. If I go to a play mode, you will see that I can just drag and drop this object or any of the other objects. Now in this scene, only the book is the one that contains an event. And then you see that all of the other objects, they're being referenced from this object. So it's easier to handle. You can just change the values on this cube and then all of the other objects will inherit the same drag and drop behavior. Finally, on this last example, you can see how you can use the drag and drop for an interesting um, experience in which you can move these objects around. These objects, they have a limit and they only can move on the floor. You can see that this one is also moving like that. There is also a little bit of a sound and they all move on the floor only. And it's nice because it feels like some sort of a Sims game or something like that. Let me just show you the settings. So this is um, drag and drop, and you can see that this object alone is the one adding the behavior to all of the other objects. You see that there is only three drop surfaces, the floor, the beam metal, and the rub rod. If I go to a play mode again, if I move this over this, you can see that that's one of the drop surfaces. 
but there is also these ones in here so I can put it on top of the rock and then there is the floor right Alright, I hope you like this tutorial and you can start building your own experiences using drag and drop in combination with all of the other events on the spline including physics and transitions and so on. Alright, see you in the next one. Bye bye.